a new flammable cladding risk. Let's have a look. Hello, everyone. Florian here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Stein of coffee because we're going to discuss a new flammable cladding risk. Now, it's been some time since we've talked about just the flammable cladding that has occurred. Well, that's been identified throughout all of Australia. Grenfell really brought it to people's attention. That was a, a flammable cladding where it went up the whole side of the building and, well, it all cost a lot of lives and it was a complete disaster. If you go back into the history of the public housing in the US and to look at why they're adding this whole water, the cladding over it to kind of waterproof this bodged up system they had from the past, it, it's, it's just a disaster from, well, decades past. It's just been built upon itself and they're putting the flammable stuff in because it's cheaper. So now they've got more issues with it. Now, we have worked on projects where we've had to identify this flammable cladding. Most of it is an aluminium composite. And we'll, we'll, you know, it depends on the substrate and the glue that it's used will affect how flammable it is. But the danger of it is that the fire will spread from front one compartment to another. So you know what? I'll draw here. So you've got, so you've got one story here, another story here. The danger is the fire is going up, 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 up into the other floor. That's the reason. That's what they're concerned about. And the fire can just spread right up the building, up this cladding, and then get into each different story. So all the fire protection you have between the floors, the doors, everything, it all goes out the window, really. Because if it can wrap around, that's the problem. That's why curtains are an issue as well. And that's why fire separation here is really, really quite important. So it looks like they've discovered more of this in, the, well, hidden in the curtain walling system. And we'll just jump over here. Here's some images of just curtain walls, everyone, you've got a primary structure, and then you've got a curtain wall hanging off it, and you don't want the fire going up that. You do not. Not at all. Often, you know, they may have to sprinkler them to uh, to address that. What do we got here? I mean, here you go. You've got a few different systems here. You can see it's been a while since we've done a curtain wall system. So let's have a look. You'll often engage a specialist. And, I mean, there'll be a whole team working on these systems. So let's have a look at what Barbara Francis and uh, Russ Littleson have written. Another major fire risk has been uncovered in Melbourne. Curtain walls containing flammable aluminium composite panelling. At least 10 residential buildings in, in Melbourne have a type of curtain wall with flammable cladding concealed within the wall cavity, according to a report by a high-profile fire safety consulting firm. Now, that's, this is the big problem. Whenever you're doing an inspection on a building, like even a building and pest inspection, they will only, well, they'll only capture what they can see. They might open a few hatches and have a look around. But unless you just do destructive testing where you like drill a hole into something, you're not going to know. A curtain wall is a window system positioned externally to the building structure, spanning multiple levels and forming a continuous facade. This curtain wall fire risk is a late discovery outside the original scope of the Cladding Safety Victoria. Um, affected apartment owners are facing in, insur, insur, insurable, insurable, insuperable, insuperable remediation bills, or insurmountable, in the tens of millions, and sometimes more than 100 million, where you're looking at potentially replacing the entire facade which is insane. There have to be other ways to deal with this risk. This is the thing. It's all from a risk perspective. You want to minimize the risk. And the issue is it's, it's a bigger risk in like an apartment building because we saw what happened in the past. People smoking on a balcony, put it out in an ice cream container, catches on fire. You know, and if you have people sleeping in a building, that's a greater risk than people just working too because when you're awake, you should be aware. You've got more chance of fleeing. Uh, we live here, seen a copy of the alarming fire exert expert report entitled Preliminary Overview of Melbourne Buildings with Non-Compliant Curtain Walls. If anyone has a copy of that, can you let me, can you send it to me, please? I think it'd be worth going through that in the channel. I'll try and do some digging and ask around. But if you have it or know someone that does, please send it to me and we'll just read through the whole thing. It'd be nice, nice and boring weekend job, but I think it's good to expose the public to these type of things. At the date of going to press, the report is yet to be released. When released, we expect it should set off alarm bells for the state government. The consultant's report was triggered by the discovery of a staggering quantity of cladding in a curtain wall 
of an inner city Melbourne apartment building. Previous investigations by others had failed to discover much of the cladding concealed by the curtain wall. So was it behind it? Oh, maybe they. Oh, what are they using it as the spander, or what are they using it for in there? The consultants found the vertical connected curtain wall system posed a credible risk of rapid fire spreading over multiple stories, including the additional flammable material uncovered. The total area of flammable cladding in the building is an astonishing 50,000 square meters. This Melbourne building now holds the unenviable record of the largest cladding project in Australia, easily surpassing the previous record held by a Perth building with 28,000 square meters. The consultants have warned the owners that the issue is serious. With the building in its current state, the firm is of the opinion that the City of Melbourne's initial evaluation that the building is a danger to the life, safety or health to members of the public and any person using the building or to any property is indeed correct. So are people still using that building? That's what we need to know. What's, what's the name of the building? Those of you in Melbourne, let me know if, there's, uh, if you're not able to go to work suddenly on Monday. Extending their re- research, the consultants found several other high-rise buildings in the Melbourne CBD fitted with the same curtain wall system from the same overseas manufacturer. Well, yeah. I mean, here's the thing. You can... Sp- when you specify, as a designer, when you specify parts of a curtain wall system or a building facade, you just have to trust these testing certificates they give you, the pieces of paper that they give you. You have to trust it. And the way that it's assessed, this cladding, it's a bit up in the air too. Honestly, if it passes, if it doesn't pass, it's... Uh... On top of this, the report found there were there were several ignition risks within these high-rise buildings that could create fires. That's the real prospect problem this is yeah so the research by the fire risk consultants includes findings that the extensive presence of acp within the curtain wall cavity can lead to broken sheet glass falling in the event of a fire in contrast with other windows installed in melbourne high rise rises are fire resistant in a fire the outer layer of glass in non-curtain walls will break up into very small pieces and fall the peculiar construction of the curtain wall with flammable material immediately behind the glass. Oh, shit. Did they use this to color it? Did they use this to color it? Crap. So, they, so you know, you got glass and you want to make it a nice color. Did they put ACP behind it? Is that what they did? Shit. It's prone to make the glass crack and fall in large pieces. Oh, no. How has this issue gone undetected, or at least unreported? The fire consultants explained it may be a case of out of sight, out of mind. The ACP panels within the building's curtain wall cavities are not visually identifiable from outside the building. To see the flammable materials, you need to undertake destructive investigation of the external wall system or internal wall linings. See, this is, this is why... All of the construction drawings for projects should be publicly available. Honestly, how how can you find the drawings for any buildings? I mean, it's you don't want to copy it because it's people's IP, but we need to have access to it for health and safety. I've got to do all these safety and design reports and stuff. All of these things, people need to have access to the information. Just develop a blockchain that puts it all up there. Yeah, sure. The expert report paints a disturbing picture for the owners of the building that initiated the study. 26 insurers have been approached and denied insurance for the building. A full replacement cost could be in the vicinity of $150 million. Oh, shit. Every consultant is going to get dragged into this building. The consultants added, like all the designers, all the fire engineers, they just pull everyone in. My insurance doesn't cover me for this anymore, for AC, you know, flammable cladding. It's been exempt. So, once the insurers know the full extent of the cladding, there is simply no way they will provide cover. Yeah, why would they? Why can you blame them? We all know that you need insurance to get a loan. With the building unable to source insurance, owners are unable to obtain any funding for remediation works. The owners also risk a fine of 462000 if they do not remove the flammable material to satisfy the building Orders that have been issued by the council are ah, so they're they're screwed. Even if they take legal action, they're gonna they need to fund 
to take legal action to sue the builder and the developer and, and the all the consultants and everyone and they may not even be at li- they may not even be liable they may have to sue what a dodgy manufacturer that may not even exist anymore or installers that may be gone so how many experts know about this fire risk the consultants cite engineers and scientists around the world who have been studying the curtain wall fire risk issue for some time now a paper published in the architecture and planning journal 2018 analysis analyzed how fire spreads in curtain wall facades. The study by Mostafi El- Elhawana was able to demonstrate the behavior of fire spreading in the gap between a curtain wall and floor structural slab. It's been known for much longer than this. It's definitely been known, known by much. For not, this isn't new, guys. Okay, this Rachel has done... You know what? Um, the Town Infernal Rachel Clarkson. Here we go. Rachel did her her thesis on this. Oh, well, on. She called it the Town Infernal. I don't think we've even watched the movie yet, but this was the name of her thesis. This is Rachel's undergraduate thesis. Um, see, Clarkson wasn't married. Uh, for her Bachelor of Architecture, where she looked at... Um, the regulation of fire safety and its impact on the design of tall buildings. So this is not just something from 2018. She goes, the best thing about this thesis is the history section. Where am I in the acknowledgements? There you go. Thank you for spending your days of your holiday in Hong Kong sorting through plans and sections with me. I tell you the day Rachel had to bind this, we were at uni. It was all over the place. She was going hysterical. It was a nightmare. It really was a nightmare. But we went to Hong Kong for a uni trip and Rachel used that as an opportunity because you can get plans for any high-rise building in Hong Kong. She bought briefcases full of plans, spent thousands of dollars, two grand bringing them back for her thesis. And she actually bumped into, I think, a fire engineer when we were at the planning office. I spent days in the town planning section of Hong Kong. This is love. This is love, okay? All this other romantic bullshit, uh, screw that. It's it, you love someone you put up looking at microfilm for plans in Hong Kong for how I rise buildings. Okay, that that that's it here. But you go through the historical section here where she looks at just all the different disasters and how that led to uh, fire uh, regulation. And I don't know if she talks about it here, but th- she's talking more about the floor configuration and all the emergency floors they use and these type of stuff. I think even I did some of these drawings. <laughs> there you go. Oh, good old sketch up. Shit, the memory's flowing back here, guys. This is a long time ago. But you can see here, she went through all the different buildings, all, got all the plans, you know, looking at sections through facade and dealing with this. This isn't some new thing that's just been discovered in 2018. Often, you have to wet the entire facade. You know, what's changed is the fact that these panels are now considered flammable. Anyway, um, A further danger was found to arise from secondary fires ignited by burning debris falling from the upper floor levels. A report also cites a 2020 Australian study by the CSIRO that examined a series of fire incidents involving ACP. For example, the Wuxin Golden Suite apartment building in South Korea was a building that was affected by a combustible curtain wall system. A fire at the building in 2010 started from a spark in an electrical outlet on the fourth floor within 20 minutes. The fire spread up the vertical facade to the top floor of the 38-story building. Yeah, and the problem is the smoke can get in there, and the smoke can be hot enough to even start other fires. You can get your curtains and your your soft furnishings in fire inside on fire inside your apartment. The smoke can spread, and it can kill people really quick. We're lucky. We are so lucky here in Australia that it hasn't. We haven't had that many issues. We haven't had that, any deaths or that many deaths. It could be much worse. The, the vertical fire spread was around one of the building's exterior alcoves. The result, re-radiation and chimney effect, appeared to enhance the fire spread. The fire brigade deployed helicopters to drop water on the building and to evacuate some occupants from the roof. While thankfully there were no fatalities, several people were seriously injured. So it appears that a huge invisible fire risk that has long concerned experts here and overseas is only now becoming known to the general public. Oh, well, I... 
Maybe it is. Okay. I'm not the general public, am I? <laughs> I keep I keep forgetting that. Stuff I think is common knowledge is, is because I, I'm a bloody architect. Uh, I plead a government. Oh, that, you don't want to plead a government, but anyway. The consultants concluded their last result report with a statement addressing the role of the state government regarding the several buildings, flammable curtain walls, whilst external wall cladding continues to be rectified, is our belief that equal importance should be appointed to curtain wall systems and their use in high-rise buildings to ensure the safety of dwellings and life. Government intervention will be required to help the owner's corporation deal with the financial burden this will place on the buildings. Could you, could you wet them all? Could you install sprinkler systems up and down the buildings just to wet them? You know, really just drench it. I don't think it wouldn't work, would it? Anyway. Um, as a non, non-for-profit organization, donations from individuals and buildings keep our campaigns going. Okay, so they're soliciting funds. I've, this was sent to me by someone on Twitter. Thank you very much. I wouldn't have been aware of it otherwise. Anyway, guys, let's, uh, well, let's have a talk about it. There you go. Just another issue to deal with construction here in Australia. I want to read through this report to see how it actually manifest, you know, how this came about. Uh, because here's the thing. if As designers, when we design stuff, we'll use standard details. We'll take, use material specification data from consultants uh, and manufacturers, and that's all you can trust. We can't do... Science, you know, the scientific tests ourselves. We have to trust the third parties that do those. And then if the rules change, this this is going to be a nightmare. These poor people, they're screwed. They are screwed. This is the problem. I I don't know if I ever want to buy an apartment in my entire life. I I really, I'm I'm too damaged now. I'm too damaged. I've read too many horror stories. Shit. Anyway, guys, you tell me. You tell me. Maybe I just need need a few more years without reading about disasters and all of these problems. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you want to support us, there are a few ways you can. Financially via YouTube or Patreon, using our referral links or buying our pocket squares. Call us if you need an architect and take care, everyone. I'll see you next time. You've got to feel sorry for these people. This is just... There's no way... No way they could have avoided this if they had have done a defects inspection or a dilapidation report or had a you know building a pest done. It's impossible.